Well, this is a bit of a controversial one from talking to you um, because for me, it's my favourite of the Indiana Jones movies, but for a lot of people, it is the, the least favourite until Kingdom of the Crystal Skulls came out. But we're talking about collecting um, Temple of Doom merchan merchandise and collectibles. So tonight we're looking at the second of the Indiana Jones uh, movies, which is actually the first one if you look at chronologically, mm -hmm. except for the young Indiana Jones clip at the start of Last Crusade. Mm -hmm. So get, get your mind around that. Now, on that slide there, we begin to see, which is probably the very first items uh, that came out related to Temple of Doom. Interestingly, the top, um, the top left newspaper cutting is for Raiders of the Lost Ark that has been playing for 52 weeks successively in the Russell cinemas, uh, which is an interesting little fact. Um, and then you've got the the advertising for Temple of Doom. And interestingly, Temple of Doom didn't have a lot of different press designs. It was pretty much the only one I could find was the standard poster. And then you've got the uh, the poster with the information on at the top, the hero is back um, with a lot of information about Indiana Jones and the statistics of the previous movie and what's happening in this new movie. And of course, um, like Raiders of the Lost Ark, Temple of Doom, the toy shops came uh, looking for things they could make from this franchise, and they found it a bit hard because it was a darker movie. Um, they found, you know, child slavery and um, human sacrifices a bit hard, especially in the 80s, to make toys of. Now, here's some of the uh, press and promo stuff that was available for Temple of Doom. The press kits um, included... A, a fantastic range of black and white photos that are very evocative of the movie and, of course, some of uh, Spielberg and Lucas. Uh, the press kits came with plot synopsis and, of course, I guess importantly, uh, descriptions of the new characters because because they went back in time, they didn't have Marion and they didn't have uh, any of the characters that have become reoccurring characters in the franchise. They had Willie Scott as a nightclub singer and Short Round and it's interesting having short round as a sidekick because one of the things I think a lot of movies do is when they add a child sidekick, it often can ruin a movie, especially if it's in a sequel and they kind of <clears throat> add a new son or a secret son or daughter to sort of get new plot. Short round is one of those sidekicks that I think is fantastic and doesn't annoy me at all. So let's move on. Um, we looked at some of the press stuff and press releases, but I guess for fans, one of the things that they collect from movies is the posters. And Temple of Doom, although it had a sort of um, uniform uh, release and look globally, there were a lot of variations in the posters around the world. The one on the bottom left there is one I remember seeing in Australia. We looked at the, the Hero is Back, which is the huge sheet with all the stats and information about the movie on. But the one on the far right there is by far probably the one that I remember the most when it came out, which um, has the the spikes descending from the ceiling with Indy in the big circle, which probably is reminiscent of the ball from the first movie that rolls down the, the uh, corridor at him and then all of the heroes and villains around the edge, which really captures, I think, the roller coaster ride of a movie that this movie is going to turn out to be. Here are some of the international um, release posters. We have, of course, like the interesting um, interpretation from the Czech poster as well with the, the giant skull and Indy um, taking the stones from it. And the, the middle one is a, a German poster, which I think is quite unique. And then we've got the Latin one on the right there. Again, a different variation. I think it's interesting that the Indiana Jones uh, posters do tend to include all of the elements from the movie. And I think that helps the audience know what's coming up and sort of the adventure and the ride it's going to be in. It's interesting in the middle one that they have two versions of Indiana Jones. They have the suave nightclub version mm -hmm. in the tuxedo from the start of the movie. And they also have, you know, the one we all know and love in the, the, uh, the adventure outfit with the whip. Um, and I did like the look of Indy. He brushed up pretty well in this movie too. Here is um, the Japanese uh, uh, press uh, campaign. And again, I love the Japanese stuff. I don't like this as much as I've done on some of the other things. And I think it is because they take a lot of the uh, press photos and have put the posters around the press photos rather than what they usually do and have the movie artwork and incorporate the Japanese writing into the artwork. Now, this is interesting because I guess the artwork from Indiana Jones is so busy that maybe they couldn't get it onto the poster. 
Another thing that's really interesting um, on the posters and some of the other artwork for Temple of Doom, a lot of the um, posters feature the statue of Kali or a representation mm. of it that was in the Temple of Doom. And I guess that is the heart of the Temple of Doom because they worship Kali. But for me, it was never really a big part of the movie, but it ends, ends up on quite a lot of the press for it and the comic books and, and things like mm. that. Um, there are a lot of images that I feel they took pictures of um, gruesome statues and carvings and stuff like that, and they ended up in the press for it, but they weren't really a big part of the movie, which happens sometimes. Now, yeah. part of the, um, I guess, the movie poster campaign are, are lobby cards. Now, a lot of the time when they release lobby cards, it's the same pictures in every single country, and then they have a different border with the, that country's language explaining what they are. Interestingly enough for um, Temple of Doom, each uh, country seemed to have the, ma the majority of the cards were different from every other country. So you can see there's a European one there, there's a Japanese one there, and I think the Australian one there. And there's only one or two pictures that cross over from um, country to country. So if you collect the lobby cards with Temple of Doom, you've got to go country to country and find the different different pictures to, to find a complete set if you're really that um, uh, completest. Well, it's one of those things as well where Raiders of the Lost Ark was a bit of a surprise hit and we got the merchandise sort of a year or two after the movie came out. Temple of Doom, they prepared stuff and then it was so dark, we didn't get a lot of the merchandise in Australia. Um, we got the Raiders of the Lost Ark trading cards, but we didn't get the Temple of Doom trading cards and it's interesting to me when this happens for big movies when i was growing up as a kid i just presumed they didn't make a temple of doom trading card set because it didn't come out in australia it was a huge movie and for them just um, to say scanlon's oh no we're not going to bother uh, probably was quite a big deal i mean it probably would have lost them quite a bit of money it being so dark that uh, franchisees decided they weren't going to pick it up because maybe it was too questionable to sell to kids with that in mind, it was also in the cards. It was in the cards, and it's really interesting because what people who design cards love to do is go through the movie and find the most dramatic and extreme bits. So when you've got the movie and it goes to the censors and the censors go, you've got to do another edit where you put more flames in front of the sacrifice so you can't see what's going on, the people who are making the cards um, go and pick the the frame where the guy's getting incinerated and they release a card of it and they call it human burning and stuff mm. stuff like that as, as a kid i just thought that was amazing but um you now it'd be controversial you know and here we have the action figures and again we just about didn't get the action figures released here what happened here was um, the major toy companies and distributors passed on them they were lgn which are a, a quite a big toy company. The only way you could get them here was in the Kellogg's uh, giveaway. And you basically had to match three cards to an action figure. And that was the only way in Australia at the time that you could get the Temple of Doom figures. And you can see there are five figures there, but only three of them ever got officially released. So you had the Thuggy Giant, you had Mola Ram and Indiana Jones, but Willie Scott and Short Round didn't even get released. Um, the, the movie didn't do well enough for the toy franchise to um, continue producing the rest of the line. So the packeted figures you got on the left, would they, if you had them today, be worth like absolute squillions or just no interest in them they're whatsoever? Worth, they're, they're worth a bit, but not squillions because they did get a general release in America. And I think they sold well enough that you can track them down. Sort of maybe a really nice Indiana Jones might set you back 500 US, I think they go for, and the other figures are about two or 300 each. Loose, you can get a full set if you're lucky for about $100 US. So they're still available at a price you can get. One of our very first shows, um, one of the eBay things we highlighted was actually all the um, prototypes and hard copies for the Indiana Jones stuff turned up on eBay uh, last year and went for three or $4,000 US. And there's some of the pictures of the stuff that was auctioned. So they turned up and, yeah, they were that close to producing them. And you can see there is an AFA graded Indiana Jones there. So they do turn up and get graded and good enough to get quite high um, AFA ratings. What would have been a very cool toy and it was never produced is that Minecraft chase. Yeah. And it was adapted from another toy uh, that you could you know, have a track and you could roll it up the walls and everything and the car would go round and round it. And they, they turned it into an Indiana Jones 
theme. I think that would have been an absolutely fantastic, one of the best Indiana Jones toys ever if they had actually um, been popular enough to create it. Now, they did do a comic book um, version of the movie. The adaptation ran over three issues of the Indiana Jones comic. Indiana Jones, I think, had ended as a weekly comic by then, so it came back for Temple of Doom. There is um, a few original pieces of artwork still floating around. I've uh, managed to find two online there, and there's one of the title pages to one of the issues. Um, and then there's a couple of uh, a couple of panels from different issues of Temple of Doom. It is a good comic. I remember having the comics and reading it and thinking it was a particularly good version. The artwork is sort of really good. It's adequate. It's not anything absolutely amazing, but it definitely uh, captures the spirit of the movie. Again, it's one of those movies where in comic book form, you know, they can push it and be super gory or they can back away from it and make it kid friendly, but they did a pretty good adaptation of the movie. There's the three issues, the covers of them. Uh, it's very interesting. I think they do really capture the different uh, elements of the movie where the first one you've got the plane flight over Tibet and Indy in his sort of uh, tuxedo. And then you've got the different versions of, um, well, different scenes that are captured really well. So you've got the fighting with the thuggies and, and uh, Indiana Jones in the middle version. And then the last where you've got uh, Mola Ram reveals himself to be evil and behind everything and everything to do with the Temple of Doom. So, yeah, so it's a good adaptation. And if you can track it down, they're actually still really cheap. You can get them on Australian eBay for about $15 for the set. So still reasonably priced as well. Now, the other thing that came out, and I don't think it was released in Australia because I certainly didn't remember seeing it and I've never found one in the wild since, is the um, Temple of Doom board game. And when I looked into this, this is actually quite a fun board game. It uh, takes the section that you've just spoke about and it's the Minecraft. Um, sorry, the Minecraft, not Minecraft. <laughs> I'm brainwashed by my son, Minecraft everything. The Minecart trace chase through the Temple of Doom um, and instead of like little figures, you get the mine carts that you run along the track and try and get out of the temple as fast as you can, picking up things along the way. So it is one of those board games, you know, you have on one end of the scale, a board game that slaps the name of the franchise and then has nothing to do with it. And then you have ones that are really story specific. And this is quite a good uh, version of taking a scene from the movie that is exciting and turning it into a board game for people to enjoy at home. Well, it would make sense to make a board game out of that sequence. As we said, it was absolutely fantastic. So it's better the better the mind cart sequence than some of the than the dinner scene. So uh, <laughs> yay team. Speaking of dinner. <laughs> now, here we go. This is what I was talking about earlier. Now, these are so rare, I could barely find any reference to them online at all. Uh, there's a great site, um, the Toll Toys, um, Toll Toys Collectors site, and I did find some of the images there. Now, I hated Coco Pops when I was growing up, so I wouldn't have had these through Coco Pops, but it was only Coco Pops that I could find any packaging examples of online. But this is the Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom uh, promo with giveaways. And basically, you can see on the, the right-hand side there, you've got the cards, and the cards are interesting because there's one card there that hasn't been opened. It's sort of the one in the middle. And when you open the card, you get the photo that's at the top and then you get the comic that's underneath with the story. So really, two pieces make one complete card. So um, it's really hard to get a set because for every piece that was out there, you have to find the two pieces to it. And it's really hard to find unopened ones because it was matching the card pieces underneath that won you the prizes. And what kid is going to leave the mint unopened if there's a chance of winning Indiana Jones toys by opening them up. Uh, now, regarding this, what I find is interesting, 2,251 fantastic prizes to be won. You couldn't think they could just narrow it down to 2,250. And I like how you fact that it's a Temple of Doom, Coco Pops thing. But, of course, Coco is a monkey. And, of course, monkeys don't exactly have a really good time of it in the movie. So, <laughs> anyway, yeah, there you go. That would have, been, that that. Could have been a fantastic tie-in. Uh, Coco the monkey with half his head removed. Yeah, uh, on, yeah. Anyway. On. The other interesting thing about Temple of Doom, when Raiders of the Lost Ark came out, um, there wasn't really an active, as in sending stuff out and exploiting the fans, fan club um, operating for Star Wars. There was a fan club, but it wasn't at the point where they had, like, merchandise and, and everything in 81. By the time Raiders of the Lost Ark came out, Lucas fan, uh, Lucasfilm uh, had a fan club running. They had banned the tracks. You could be a member. They sent stuff 
worldwide. And here's an interesting thing that the bottom, um, the bottom folder there that's open is the welcome folder to the Lucasfilm fan club. And you can see in that there's a, a Temple of Doom patch and there's a Luke Skywalker picture and there's a copy of Bant the Tracks. Now, I still have my original welcome pack to the um, Lucasfilm fan club and you can see I have still got my original Indiana Jones um, pictures that came with it. And this is a particular favourite piece for me when I was growing up, the um, that classic Indiana Jones photos. Then, of course, it goes back into to main Star Wars stuff. But I loved um, Temple of Doom so much that when I was growing up, I chose the Indiana Jones version of the official um, Lucasfilm fan club. Well, the other thing at this time, we were getting to the mid-80s when um, home video games were becoming quite popular. Now, we talked about the Raiders one. This is the Temple of Doom one. The Raiders one I played, there were different versions of the Temple of Doom one, and I do not remember any of them. Um, I got online and had a look, and the gameplay is good. It's sort of a maze running through um, mine shafts, and some of the games, because there's different ones, do have the um, mine cart chase. Uh, most of them are getting to the temple, stealing stones, getting the stones out of the temple while you navigate thuggy and lava and different um, obstacles from the movie. So they're, they're, they're good games, but I never remember seeing them in Australia or I was too old or in the wrong place to get them. And this is another one. I don't know if it was released here because I used to hang out in um, arcades even when I was quite quite young. And I don't remember seeing the Temple of Doom upright. And I was quite surprised when I was looking into this episode that there was one. And, you know, there's there's ones out there and people have them in their collections. And I'm a big fan and this, like, totally passed me by. But there was a Atari upright for the Temple of Doom that was in arcades and it had probably it was just a better version of the home videos where the graphics were better but the gameplay was the same where you had to navigate the temple steal the stones to get them back to the village minecraft chase lava fuggy giants that kind of thing and here's here's the last one again these do turn up sometimes but um i've never played them they released the um, home versions for nintendo and other systems of um the temple of doom as well all of the games seem to have the same basic um, play where it's a maze through the temple and through the mine shafts and around the, the tracks on the mine carts to try and get the kids out, save the kids, get the stones out, get them to the village. The thing with this is I probably wouldn't play it anymore. I'd probably own them just for the artwork because they do have particularly nice artwork from the time and it is artwork. It isn't, um, you know, it isn't uh, computer generated stuff. It, it, it's that sort of evocative time that captures the the feel of the movie really well. I hate it when they get artwork and they reverse it, right? <laughs> it, it jars. It, it, it down the bottom is the correct orientation, right? I mean, yes. you can tell just by looking at it that it's not correct, and it's just so annoying when they do that. So, yeah. Um, yeah. We've had a look at a lot of the classic um, toys and stuff. Was it available? But the great thing about Indiana Jones is it comes back and a lot like Star Wars, every sort of decade you get a new movie or a new push or a new video game and it means that Hasbro or another company get the license and produce more figures. And what happened when Crystal Skulls came out, and some may say it was the best thing about Crystal Skulls, the interest in all the other Indiana Jones movies went through the roof. So even though Crystal Skulls memorabilia was released, I was more excited that they released a whole lot of Indiana Jones figures from Raiders, Temple of Doom, and Last Crusade. And in some cases, it was the character's debut um, 30 years after they were first in the cinema. So you had this really amazing set of figures come out, and they were all things I would have loved as a kid but just weren't available here. Yeah. Now, again, one of my favourite things about uh, the Indiana Jones franchise merchandise is the Lego. Uh, for some reason, I think... Lego works really well on some movies and not as well on others. And Indiana Jones is a fantastic franchise for Lego to work on. Temple of Doom is a bit shortchanged. It only had the two sets. It had um, the one we looked at earlier, which was the, um, the mine cart chase, um, which is a fantastic set and it's on multi levels and you can push the carts down and they go down like a train. And I always go, Oh, it'd be fantastic to get some of the uh, 10 of these sets and make a massive, um, uh, mine 
minecart ride thing, but of course that'll never happen. And then they released the two cars and the gangsters from outside Club Obi-Wan from the start of the movie. And unbelievably, that set goes for just about as much as the Minecraft, uh, <laughs> the mine chase set, um, just because both of them have uh, unique figures that are only available in those sets. So you've got the nightclub Willie Scott and Short Round, and then you've got uh, Lao Chi and some of his uh, bad guys, and you've got unique cars. So one of those things with Lego we see again and again, if they've got unique figures, you can never lose money by collecting Lego. Now, here are the high-end collectible items um, from Temple of Doom that are available. And these, these are fantastic. I actually think Indy looked kind of the best as a rugged adventurer in Temple of Doom out of the um, leather jacket and in ripped up clothes. He looks like he's really been through the wars. On the left there, we've got the Sideshow 12-inch uh, figure. It's not the Hot Toys one. Sideshow did um, a Temple of Doom version, which is quite hard to find and quite good. Um, maybe, uh, look, the Hot Toy isn't my favourite Hot Toy, actually. So it gives the Hot Toy one a run for its money. There's a quarter scale statue, statue in the middle there. And the premium format one you can see sitting on the dais at the bottom is a, a little um, monkey dessert, which I think is, again, a funny thing to give as a, a bonus for the, the statue. But that is one of my favourite Indiana Jones statues where he's in the classic um, pose with the sword from Temple of Doom. That will set you back over $1,000 now. It's quite a hard statue to find around. And again, this is an absolutely awesome figure. Um, you've got Mola Ram in his classic um, heartburn pose. And if you get the limited edition side Sideslow exclusive, it comes with the, the blood of Kali Chalice, which is basically a rotting corpse head um, that you drink the, the blood, the dark blood of Kali out of its mouth, which is another amazing piece to give away with a statue. Um, I don't know how popular that statue would be sort of sitting in the middle of a family home though that's my argument the producer you're right it's great it's wonderful people go oh that looks spectacular do i want it no so uh <laughs> it's definitely a very limited market so yeah. yes even if you're an indiana jones fan doesn't mean by default you're going to go oh, i've got to have one of those because you know it's just the coolest looking thing in the entire universe so uh, speaking of things that look a tad ugly, not, look at the when you want to put the screen up look to the extreme right hand side and ask me if you're going to buy one of these things <laughs> There we go. So, and one of those is sitting in your lounge room. <laughs> yeah, so you can get a replica of, of the um, the Chalice of Kali. Um, there's another statue there. It's the other two I've seen in person. This one I haven't seen in person. It's the um, the climax to the movie where you've got Mola Ram and Indiana Jones hanging off the rope bridge before one of them falls to their death in amongst the crocodile infested river. I, in case you haven't seen the movie, I won't tell you which one dies, which one. Yeah. Survived. Oh, look, a 40 year out of date spoiler alert. Yeah. Good on you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it is interesting. I don't know if you've read the making of book, but when the uh, stones burn and um, Molaram drops them in the original cut or the original intention was he was controlled by the black, blood of Kali, and yeah. he came out of that trance and was a good guy when he fell to his death. But I think it's probably right that they changed that. Yeah, I love it, Mark. Uh, buy the six Kali heads, uh, the chalice of Kali <laughs> for your dinner parties. That is definitely the way to go. Yeah, so thanks for sticking with us as we look through some of the dark and, and the light things that were available for um, the Temple of Doom. Like I said, some people's favourite movie from the indie franchise and, and other people who didn't think it was in as high regard as the, the other ones. Love it or hate it, it, it spawned a lot of merchandise and a lot of us have uh, fond memories growing up with this movie as one of our go-to movies when we had a Saturday night spare or something like that.